What's up guys, Dougie Fresh here, and welcome back to another episode of Poker Hands. Today we're going to be taking a look at a big pot I played back on the Aussie Millions cash game. Let's jump into the action. Three of hearts. Loshing Fung comes along for the ride. Wait and see what he's got. Ivy's involved with two five of diamonds. Certainly a, a lot of hands you won't see in tournament poker, that's for sure. Polk looks like he's in there with pocket fours. Our hand begins with Patrick Antonius raising it up with ace three suited in the low jack. Definitely the standard play. Now Lowe decides to call with queen jack off, and you can't see his cards yet at this point, but he has queen jack off and decides to make the flat. We actually looked at almost this exact spot on a live at the bike hand last week, where I folded with this exact action. It was the hand where Josh had 5-3 and turned the nuts. And so this is definitely a hand you want to let go of. It doesn't play well multi-way, you're often dominated by stronger holdings, and it's not even suited, you can just let this guy go. Now Ike folds and Ivy decides to make a super questionable flat here on the button with 5-2 of diamonds. It's okay to play a little loose here when there's a couple weaker players involved in the pot, but I think you want to draw the line somewhere, and 5-2 suited's a pretty bad hand. I think that he should probably be folding this as well, but whatever, people want to gamble. Over to the small blind, Richard Young decides to flat with pocket eights, certainly the standard play. And the big blind I have pocket fours and definitely don't want to squeeze this guy. I call two and let's take a flop. Well, in tournament poker, a lot of the time we're, uh, we're rather short stacked relatively. There could be a lot of action on that flop, Grant. There's six, five, four there, two hearts. We have, well, Antonius has got the nut flush draw and Polk's flopped the set. And we still don't know what all the cards are. Polk has a set, Richard Young, has at least a gut shot straight draw. Phil Ivey has a pair in the bottom end of a gut shot. Antonius, like you said, has the nut flush draw plus an open ender. Fold. Well, low folds, he gets Fold. out of there. He had queen jack off suit. Now we're gonna find out what Richard Young had. I think we're gonna see some- <laughs> See raised. Great. Well, I mean, he could have eight, seven. Have both of these players in bad shape. What? If he has eight, seven, this could be an incredible hand. You got a set, the nut flush draw, and a straight draw. And if he has seven, eight, he has the nuts. Let's wait to see if the graphic will catch up. Meanwhile, actions on Doug Polk, who's facing a very big bet. Meanwhile, Max Alter got fits in dinner <laughs> while he waits. An interested bystander. Don't want to miss a hand. Not at these stakes, anyway. The pot. Just over a hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Polk will call, and this pot will swell much bigger than one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. I'd say, Paul. Patrick, not going anywhere. <laughs> Antonius casually calls. The flop comes six five four, which is certainly an action flop. Antonius flops the nut flush draw with an open ender. I flop a set, and Richard Young flops an over pair with a gut shot to the nut straight of the nine eight. At this point, Richard Young checks, and the big one I decide to lead. At this point in my game, I had developed the strategy for favorable flops in the big blind, like low flops, where I'm going to certainly have a bunch of straights, to have leads with hands like straights or sets and draws, while still checking some of those hands as well. In general, this board is favorable for the big blind. I'm almost certain that the optimal solution for the game includes big blind leads. The question is, how do you balance out that range? Nowadays, I tend to play all my hands as checks, but at the time, I was going for a more blended strategy of flush draw, straight draw, set some straights, and then going from there, and also some two pairs. At this point, Antonius calls, and that's reasonable. I think you can kind of make an argument for either raising or calling. Uh, by raising, knocking other players out of the pot is good. Uh, additionally, you don't really have that many straights in Antonius's spot, so maybe he's worried if he gets bet three bet, his hand won't play too well, because if I have a straight, he only has his flush outs, so I don't hate his call. Everyone else gets out of the way back to Richard Young, and now he has pocket eights and a decision to make. While he might be ahead of both players here, Antonius can certainly have some over pairs stronger than eights, and the big blind can definitely have hands like two pair or straights or sets, and that makes this hand a pretty tough situation. It generally plays badly in the later streets because pretty much every turn card other than an eight or a seven is bad for you, and if you raise, you're only really going to get action from better hands. And this is really one of the tough things about playing in the small blind, you get constantly put into these difficult situations. 
In general, I think I prefer just to go for a flat here. I don't think the raising really accomplishes too much. If the pot starts to get too big, your hand's going to have to give up anyway, and both players can easily have hands that have you beat. Also, in a small blind flat range, you're not as likely to have hands like straights, which should play some role as well. He does decide to raise, and then the action's back over to me in the big blind. Now, in this spot, I can have a bunch of good hands when I just lead the flop in the big blind. I'm going to have hands like 8-7. I'm going to have hands like probably this many ways, 7-3 off, 3-deuce off. I can have a ton of really good hands, as well as two pairs and sets and stronger draws. I think in general, my game plan would be to sometimes bet 3-bet with my better straights, like 8-7 or 7-3. Call my lower straights, call my two pairs, call my sets, and call my better draws. And if I did lead out with a hand that was more of a gut shot bluff, a hand like 9-8, I'd let it go at this point. It could be okay to throw some hands like that in, just so that if you do get called, you can give up, but you can potentially win the pot with just a gut shot and no showdown value five way. Shouldn't do that often though, because if you do that too often, you're going to get action a bunch of places and there's a lot of players in the pot, so you're going to want to be careful with how much bluffing you do. Anyway, I decided to go ahead and call, and the action's back over to Patrick Antonius. Now he should clearly flat, his hand plays nicely in this spot, and if he's up against sets, he has a ton of equity, but if he raises here and gets in versus straight, he's going to get in way behind. Also, he's getting great odds and has position. He calls, and let's take a turn. <laughs> a queen of hearts, so Antonius with the nuts now. Well, we know Richard Young is drawing dead, regardless of what his other card is. And his body language kind of suggested a resignation in that check. Now over to Polk, who's still sitting with a set of fours. Yeah, Polk can still win this hand. We know at the moment Patrick has a lock on it. Well, Patrick's going to place a pretty big bet here. He may not want to see the river. 115,000. Richard Jong, who made a big raise on the flop, is now out. And Polk, with a set of fours, has got to pay 115,000 if he wants to see his set turn into a full house. Or maybe. Well, it's a fine line for Patrick. He obviously wants to get value from his flush here. But at the same time, he doesn't want to lose Doug. Regardless of what Doug has, Patrick knows that he's in good shape. But Doug has a hand that can catch up. Doug makes the call, so the pot swells. The turn comes the Queen of Hearts, and Antonius has to be pumped. He now has the nuts in a big pot three-way in position. Young checks, and yeah, he's going to have to just check fold. His eights don't even have a heart. He could be behind a ton of hands, and he's out of position against two players. This is an easy check fold. In the big blind, I now don't see too much reason to start betting. I can have some hands like flushes, and additionally, I can have some sets with a heart in them, although not too many of those. So I decided to check as well on the actions over to Antonius, who decides to bet with the nut flush. He should be betting, I think, almost all of his flushes here. If you wanted to check a couple strong nut flush hands back, the trap could be okay as well. But in general, both players can really have sets, so it makes sense to bet big and try and get some value. Yong gets out of the way, and the action's back over to me. Now, I'm getting a direct 3-1 to one on my money. On any board pairing river, I'm going to feel extremely good. I think that Antonis is unlikely to have hands like sets and choose to bet the turn. So when I call here on the turn, while I'm not getting exactly direct odds, I think it's likely I'm going to be able to make some money on some river board pairs, and there's still some chance Antonius has a hand like aces with a heart or queens with a heart, and took the slide and is now turning his hand into a bluff. The problem's going to be how I play my hand in the river, but let's talk about it when we get there. A seven of diamonds, no full house for Polk. He checks. Well, now Antonius has the nuts. How much can he get out of him? What's well, a good card for, for Doug? It's now four to a straight there. He may be able to get away from it. I'd say Patrick's going to shove. It's 445 in the pot. He has 200,000 behind. Yes, you're right, Grant. He has moved all in. I can't imagine. The river comes an offsuit seven, which is not what you want to see here in the big blind. I could now still have some hands like a straight and a heart, or maybe a low turn flush that trapped, or maybe even a hand like a set with a heart in it. So a set with no heart has to be one of the worst hands I can have in this position. I check over to Antonius, and the pot's already at 450,000, and he decides to move in. And while I could maybe beat a hand like aces 
or kings or jacks with a heart. I know I said queens with a heart on the turn. Uh, that's a set. So, uh, of course, I meant kings with a heart or jacks with a heart. While he might want to choose some of those hands to bluff with, he's still going to have a ton of his flushes. And also, you know, if he did have a hand like jacks with a heart in the flop and face that action, he might not feel the most pumped to call to begin with. If I saw that action had pocket jacks, I feel like I'd be in a pretty close spot between both options. So if he would fold hands like that on the flop, it starts to become, what could this guy even be bluffing with? I think this is an important moment to talk about in big games, not psyching yourself out. I see a lot of players ask me, Doug, when I jump into this big game, what should I be doing? Like, any tips? I'm playing a big game. And I always say, just play your game. Like, there's like there's some solution that like I've been hiding that when you play real big stakes, you gotta like jump out and make. I think we see a lot of players make these mistakes when they're in the spotlight for a lot of money. Don't feel like you have to do anything different. Play what got you there and try to play your best game. People aren't just fucking with you because you're playing for a lot of money. And oftentimes other players are even more scared than you are. I'm not saying Antonius is in this spot. I'm just saying in general. So don't let the number signs get to you and just play the way you should play based on the amount of big blinds. And this hand... Given the amount of big blinds, it's just a fold. <laughs> Doug probably thinking that river card sucks. I can't call now. Little does he know it's helped him a lot and well, helped him get away from the hand. You're right. He lets go of his set with a bit of a smile and a big sigh. I will say we had a real bad stretch for Antonius on this channel, but I can't say I'm exactly thrilled to see him turn around like, like this. Thank you for joining me today for Big Ass Pot Mondays. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you tomorrow.